uh, one hi once again. Um, now this is the third video where I'll be handling this topic, uh, envelope detector, um, false alarm time, and probability of false alarm, and probability of detection. <clears throat> okay, so I'll just, uh, yeah, so this is what we were handling, that is module two, and that is, uh, and we are handling currently part one, the radar equation. The syllabus was this, so we have already completed prediction of range performance, uh, detection of signal and noise, that is uh, minimum detectable signal S min, receiver noise and SNR was uh, done in the previous uh, video, that is modified radar range equation. I had also shown you the video question paper for this question. So today we will be uh, taking this topic, the last topic, that is envelope detector. False alarm, false alarm time and probability and probability of detection. Okay. Yeah. So, so let us start now. So uh, since we are dealing with probability and uh, we are dealing with false alarm and probability of detection, we have to first uh, start with what is noise. So usually in uh, this communications, we are uh, assuming noise uh, to be an integral part of the signal. So this is a challenge to detect the target in presence of all these noise. The noise here is taken, assumed as a random phenomenon, which means noise can take any value at any time, right? Now, yeah, so uh, here the, we are assuming noise voltage, that is Vt, uh, which is described using uh, described by probability density functions that is pd so this is a continuous continuous random uh, function that is noise voltage okay. now next let us see uh, what is what are the various phenomena uh, which are used Usually we have two terms that is PFA and PD, which we had seen in the previous videos. PFA is the probability of false alarm. PD is the probability of detection. In my first video, that is prediction of range performance, I had uh, told you the importance of these two terms, that is PFA and PD. So this is these two terms are what we are going to find today, the expressions for PFA and PD. Okay. Uh, yeah. Now, so this uh, graph uh, you would have seen in uh, minimum detectable noise, with minimum detectable signal that is S min. So this is usually the threshold which we keep. So based on the threshold, we'll get to know which is the actual target which is detected, which is the false alarm, and which is the target which is not detected. So this is the threshold. Uh, and it, the actual signal is the red in color, is the one in red in co red color. So when this signal is above the threshold, we detect it. So, but weak signals in this scenario, since the threshold is little high, weak signals in this scenario will not be detected, right? So this is called as missed detection. But if this threshold is placed little below, these signals, which are actually noise, might come above the threshold and then that becomes false alarm. Okay, so this was just a revision for uh, how the, the threshold detection happens, decision happens. Now, so these are the steps which we will follow. First, what we are going to find is TFA, that is uh, time to false alarm. So I was mentioning about PFA, that is probability of false alarm. First, we'll find probability of false alarm, and then we'll find what is time to false alarm, okay? So we'll see what is all this. And then we'll also find a relation between TFA and PFA, okay? Um, and then we will, uh, the main intention is to show how to find minimum SNR required uh, in order to achieve a specified probability of detection and probability of false alarm. Okay, so then we add the signal and determine what signal to noise ratio we need to give us the specified probability of detection. So this is what we are going to do. Okay, next. Taking 
taking a little long time to move to the next slide. Yeah. So these are the various scenarios which I was talking about. Okay, so usually we have a radar receiver. So this will be a combination of LNA mixer IF stage with matched filter. The envelope detector, that is the second detector and medium amplifier. And then comes the threshold detection, decision uh, making process. So there are uh, two possibilities which can happen. One is H0 and one is H1. So H0 assume is only noise present. So assume it is a process where X is equal to N that is only noise. Okay, so this is that probability. H1 is signal plus noise that is A plus N. A is the signal. So this is that probability. So based on this, we will have four decisions to be made. Like based on these two possibilities, we'll have four decisions. One is if the actual truth is, that is the actual scenario is H0. So what is H0? Noise. If actually noise was present and the decision made is also noise, then nothing to do. We can ignore it, right? Now, if actual scenario, that is the truth is noise, that is H0. But then you have detected it to be H1. That is the signal plus noise then that becomes false alarm, which is the important part here. Then the third one is the truth is H1, that is signal plus noise, but you're deciding it to be only noise, then that becomes misdetection, right? Then the truth is H1, that is signal plus noise, but then you are detecting it to be signal, then that is a valid detection. So these are the four decisions which can be made using these two possibilities, H0 and H1. So these two are more important. One is PD, as I said, probability of detection. So this is when you, uh, when the truth is H1 and you decide it to be H1, right? So the second one is probability of false alarm, PFA. The truth is H0, but you chose it to be signal plus noise, right? So these two are what we are going to do today. Now, so the main topic is envelope detector. So envelope detector, is a combination of IF filter, the second detector, and the video amplifier. These together form the envelope detector. Uh, in that, the output of the video amplifier is the envelope or modulation of the IF signal. This video bandwidth, BV, and this is the IF bandwidth, BIF, okay? So video bandwidth must be wide enough to pass the low frequency components, which is generated by the second detector, okay? Uh, one second. Yeah, so uh, those video uh, amplifiers bandwidth, that is BV, should be wide enough to uh, pass the low frequency components, which is generated by the second detector. Uh, but the bandwidth shouldn't be so high or so wide that it passes the high frequency components at or near the IF. So accordingly, we have to choose the bandwidth of video amplifier. So generally, BV, so here you can see, generally BV is, uh, must be greater than half of BIF. So this is how it is chosen in order to pass all the video modulation and whatever is only required, okay? Now, the second detector is uh, usually a nonlinear device, such as a diode. So it can be either a linear or a square law detector. Uh, it can have a linear, or square law detector characteristics, okay, uh, which may be assumed since the effect on the detection probability is relatively insensitive to the choice. Now, uh, this square law is actually easier to handle, but then preferable is linear characteristics. Okay, yeah. Now, um, the bandwidth of radar receiver is the bandwidth of IF uh, amplifier. Okay. The envelope of IF amplifier output is the signal applied to the threshold detector. Okay. Now, now, so now the main topic is probability of false alarm. So usually, we will follow the uh, Gaussian probability density function. So Gaussian probability density function has a bell-shaped appearance and it is given by uh, an expression. Uh, I'll just show you one second.
Yeah. So this Gaussian probability density function has a bell-shaped appearance and it is defined by this expression, which you would have uh, learned in mathematics so in previous semesters. So here the mean is x naught, right? And sigma is the standard uh, deviation. Now, so this is the base. So now when it comes to red R, uh, the receiver noise uh, at the input of the IF filter, okay? The receiver noise entering the IF filter, that is the receiver noise in, at the input of the IF filter is described by the Gaussian probability density function uh, with zero mean, okay? With zero mean and this is the expression for it. P of B is equal to one by root two pi psi naught uh, e power minus v square by 2 psi. Now, uh, what is this P of V? P of V dV is actually the probability of finding noise voltage between V, yeah, and between V and V plus dV. So, we'll, uh, so here we are uh, considering the noise voltage, okay? So, this topic is probability of false alarm, right? So, we are considering only the noise voltage. And psi naught is the uh, mean square value of the noise voltage, that is mean noise power, okay? Now, uh, there was a scientist that uh, known as Rice, S.O. Rice. So he had shown that uh, when Gaussian noise is passed through the IF filter, okay, when the Gaussian noise is passed through the IF filter, probability density function of the envelope R, R is the envelope here, okay, is given by a form of Rayleigh PDF, okay? So this is how the expression would look like. It is a Rayleigh PDF, that is probability density function. So Gaussian noise was passed through a narrow band IF filter. It will give you shown by Rice. Okay, this is the scientist's name, SO Rice. So this is the expression and this is the form of a Rayleigh PDF. The probability that the envelope of the noise voltage, okay, noise voltage will exceed the threshold VT. Now VT, imagine VT is the threshold, okay? And R is the envelope, amplitude of the envelope of the filter output, okay? Now the probability that, so what are we calculating? We are calculating probability of false alarm. So false alarm means the noise voltage is going to exceed the threshold. Now, so that is what we are going to find. So the probability that the envelope of the noise voltage will exceed the threshold, voltage threshold VT will be given in this way. So it will be actually integral of uh, from Vt to infinity, right? So integral, see this. So uh, this is some any other, so this is V1 to V2. So usually when you have two thresholds, suppose the noise voltage is between V1 and V2, you'll give, give the integral V1 to V2 and then the same Rayleigh PDF expression. Now, so in actual scenarios, uh, the probability of false alarm will be the probability that the noise voltage is exceeding a threshold VT. So anything about VT, anything about the threshold, any noise voltage about the threshold is your probability that the noise is detected, correct? So which is the probability of false alarm. So VT to infinity. So integral VT to infinity and then the same expression. So if you do this integration, so if you do this integration, uh, what will you get? See. Uh, you have dr here, right? So in e power minus infinity is anyway zero. So the first term is going to be zero. Then the second in, uh, limit is vt. So you'll have r by psi naught e power minus two uh, minus r square by two uh, psi naught into dr, right? So it is with respect to r. So you will get two r by two psi naught in the denominator. So those this r by psi naught get cancelled with the denominator which occurs here and then what is to be replaced for our v2 right so what will you get basically and this minus and the minus of when you apply this limit vt gets cancelled so you'll get exp minus r square by 2 psi naught r square is replaced with the limit vt square correct so this is the expression so what is this this is nothing but pfa that is probability of false alarm so this is the probability of false alarm since it represents a probability that noise will cross the threshold VT um, and it will be called a target when only noise is present. Okay, fine. So hence, probability of false alarm is given by this expression. Okay. So 
since the probability of falsalum is probability that noise will cross the threshold so this expression which we just got is itself the expression for pfa okay fine now um this expression which we just got that is pfa the expression for pfa it does not indicate whether the whether or not the radar will be troubled by excessive false indications of target so how many times did you actually get the false alarms that will not be indicated by this term pfa right so we have a better measure of the effect of noise on radar performance that is time to false alarm okay so this is false alarm time tfa okay so now we are going to find what is tfa so we have a figure here one second so let me first explain this figure and then i'll get back to the equation so the figure here see you can see this so we are talking about noise voltage right so this is envelope of noise voltage and this is the threshold vt so anything above this threshold is going to be your false alarm correct this 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 these are false alarms now the time between two consecutive false alarms is given by tk okay so the first false alarm then between and the second false alarm the time between that is tk like that many tks could come right we don't know how many tks are going to be going to be coming so assume there are n number of tks like that so what is the averaging so you have to divide by capital n right assuming n number of such false alarms have happened okay so now let us go back to the previous slide okay so this is the expression of tfa that is false alarm time so you are averaging the average is uh dividing by n that is n is the number of times this false alarm has occurred and then we don't know how many time how many what is this number so it can happen any number of times so limit n tends to infinity and then what is uh, how, in what time duration can you get what is the time between two peaks that is tk right so uh, uh, so you are integrating all those tks so 1 to n assuming n number of such tks are there right so what is tk tk is the time between crossings of the threshold vt right we just saw in that figure the time between two peaks that is time between two false alarms right now now uh, another term which you have to see is small tk okay so uh, just i'll just take the previous slide once more so this is the expression of tfa so just note this expression so this is nothing but average of tk correct average of tk now in this slide you can uh, see this time that is small tk small tk is nothing but the time the peak time of the false alarm right so uh, now our main intention is now to find the uh, relation between pfa and tf so this fall in terms of tfa if you have to find what is pfa pfa is a ratio of the time the envelope is actually above the threshold okay the ratio of the time envelope is actually above the threshold to the total time it could have been above the threshold the ratio of the time the envelope is actually above the threshold so what is about the threshold you just saw in the previous figure one second you just saw this so what is about the threshold tk what is pfa it is a ratio of the time the envelope is actually above the threshold that is small tk to the total time it could have been it could have been above the threshold what is the total time it could have been above the threshold that is nothing but capital tk okay so pfa is nothing but the average of small tk divided by the average of capital tk okay now just go through this right so it is defined as the ratio of duration of time the envelope is actually above the threshold so the time it could have been above the threshold so this is the expression for probability of false alarm so tk the average of tk which is that is envelope is actually above the threshold to the total time it could have been above the threshold that is capital tk 
So PFA is nothing but average of small TK by average of capital TK. Now we already know uh, this average of capital TK is nothing but your false alarm time that is TFA. But what is this uh, average of small TK? It is nothing but uh, it is the average duration of noise pulse. It is approximately equal to the reciprocal of the bandwidth, which is the case, which in this case is uh, BIF, that is uh, envelope detectors, uh, IF states bandwidth, that is BIF. So now this is the relation between, so this is very important. This is the relation between um, um, probability of false alarm and probability of, uh, sorry, uh, time to false alarm, that is false alarm time. So this relation is usually asked in uh, VT. Okay, now uh, let us go to the next slide. Okay, so uh, now, so with that previous expression, we what we can get, what was uh, PFA? PFA is equal to 1 by TFA into B. So in that term, TFA becomes 1 by PFA into B. What was PFA? It was nothing but E bar minus VT square by 2 sine naught. So when it comes to the denominator, and then we take it back to numerator, it becomes E bar VT square by 2 sine naught. And 1 by B, I just said that this B is nothing but the uh, IF stage span width that is BIF. Okay, so this is the final expression for TFA in terms of PFA. So this is the probability of false alarm. This is false alarm time. Okay, so this false alarm time is usually very uh, small. Uh, it is quite small because since a decision as to whether a target is present or not is made every one by B second, that is small TK second. So bandwidth is usually large and when one by bandwidth becomes very small. So this probability of false alarm is usually, false alarm, uh, yeah, it is usually very small, okay. Now, so that was uh, probability of false alarm. Now the next topic is uh, probability of detection, okay. Now, so till now we were considering the noise input at the radar receiver. Now we will consider the sine wave signal the actual signal of amplitude capital A, okay, to be present with, along with the noise at the input to the IF filter, okay. So envelope detector starts from IF filter, then second detector, then the video amplifier, and then the threshold detection, decision process. Now, so it, uh, the expression of PDF remains the same, that is a Rayleigh PDF uh, given by Rice, but then since here, the signal amplitude of uh, signal of amplitude A is present. The only change is you will have a minus plus A square here. Okay. So consider an echo signal represented by sine wave. So echo signal that is represented by sine wave of amplitude A along with the Gaussian noise at the input okay, uh, of the envelope detector. So the PDF of envelope R at the video output is given by this expression. So here I naught of Z so I naught of Z is usually the modified Bessel's function of zero order and argument Z. Okay. Now, when the signal is absent, that is when A is zero, what will this have? What will this equation become? It will be the same as the previous PDF of noise alone that is suggested by Rice, right? Rice PDF. Okay. So when A is zero, it becomes the previous expression for noise alone. Okay. Now, the probability of detecting the signal is the probability that, so now what are we going to find? Probability of detection. The probability of detecting a signal is the probability that the envelope is exceeding the threshold VT, right? Now, so what will it be again? Integral. So the previous expression, that is this expression, in that when you give an integral, my VT to infinity, right? So that becomes your Sorry. Yeah. So, what is probability relation? Integral v to infinity, and then this same expression, right? So, this is uh, probability of detection because you have a valid uh, actual signal here. Okay, echo signal with amplitude a. Okay. Now, uh, the scientist uh, researcher Rice had used. A series approximation to solve this PD, and he had used empirical methods. He had used numerical methods 
in order to solve this okay so we have this um, pdf for noise alone and then for signal and noise so this if this is the threshold that is vt by root of psi naught if this is this is the threshold so below this is noise alone so this part is the signal plus noise okay so this was what was found now, although the receiver designer prefers to operate with voltages, it is convenient for the radar system engineers to employ power relationships. Okay, so yeah, power relationships. So we usually uh, go to power relationships. So A is nothing but voltage, right? So A by root psi naught. Now we are going to convert into power value, power base. Okay. So it is nothing but signal amplitude by RMS noise voltage. So if you have to convert it, we'll have you will write the same thing as root two into RMS signal voltage by RMS noise voltage. So if you want to square it, so what will you do? So two signal power by noise power, the whole root of this, right? So two s by n root of two s by n. So this is how you get the signal to noise ratio expression. Okay. Fine. So this was the final expression for signal to noise ratio based on probability of false alarm and probability of detection. Okay. So next topic is radar cross section of targets, which I'll be handling in the next uh, uh, video. Okay. So uh, one second, I'll just show you the video question based on this topic. Um, You can see this is the same question paper which I was showing in the previous video. This is uh, July 2019, the same code, EC 833. So here you can see in module uh, two, right? So module two, make use of portion of radar receiver block diagram. Mm -hmm. Discuss with necessary equation, the probability of false alarm and probability of detection. And that is asked for eight marks. So make use of a portion of radar receiver block diagram means you have to draw the envelope detector which we just discussed and using that block diagram you have to write down the expressions for um, probability of false element pd pfa and pd okay so this is uh, an important question fine okay and in my notes also i've included these okay so this is my notes so I'm not sharing this with you now because it is incomplete. So I will share once it is completed and uh, I want you to go through these videos. And at the end of this, I'll give you assignment. So based on the, so you have to listen to the videos and write the assignment, okay? And only after that, I'm going to share the notes. So you can see this probability of detection of false alarm notes. Okay, uh, so I'll be sharing this later. So you go through the videos, let me know if you have any doubts and then get back to me and then I'll post the assignment. Fine? Yeah. Okay. So thank you. Okay. Uh, I'll post the next video tomorrow. So based on this, please give me feedback. Thank you.